Hello, I'm Dr. Inman. This is a lecture on keratitis conjunctiva cica, or dry eye, in the canine, sometimes called booger eye. The reason I call it booger eye is because the animals will present themselves with an eye that looks very much like this, with a big disgusting green booger hanging out the inside of the eye. Booger eye. What's happening is a lack of tear production by the lacrimal glands of the animal's body. The lacrimal glands exist essentially in and around this area and produce normal tears which cover the globe of the eye. If that isn't occurring, we have irritation to the cornea and then of course we end up with low-grade infection associated with that and it basically is an unfortunate situation. One of the treatments for that would be to put in artificial tears about six to ten times a day, which a client never does, and then invariably what happens is the animal ends up with so much irritation to those tissues that the body develops an autoimmune phenomenon, an autoimmune disease condition where the body starts to reject its own corneal protein. And then what we have to do is we have to put in um, a, a situation, I'm sorry, they're, they're, they have an allergy to the actual tissues of the lacrimal gland. Then what we do is we can use a medication uh, that uh, is basically an immune suppressive drug, essentially, uh, cyclosporin, and we can put those drops in the eyes and that will actually soak up into the actual lacrimal gland and produce a phenomenon of immune suppression locally at the lacrimal gland inside the, inside the eye area. Now, the thing that becomes important is that this lacrimal gland essentially is getting to this condition because of lack of blood supply. Every animal that we see that has this condition has severe and significant reading patterns at their lanoccipital area. So here is a somatovisceral disease that we're treating, in fact, um, routinely for musculoskeletal problems and we come in and we fire this area and the energy that that fires in that area also hits the anterior superficial cervical ganglion and the accessory anterior superficial cervical ganglion that occurs up in this area that provides sympathetic and parasympathetic input into the glands of the head of the face so what we found out is that just trying to adjust this animal's musculoskeletal problems actually gave us a resolution to this particular problem. The animal would come back in months later and we'd say, well, do you need any more medication for your animal's eyes? Oh, no, that problem went away after you adjusted the animal's back. Huh? So we started looking at this, uh, this condition as a means to try to rehabilitate the parasympathetic and blood supply to the actual lacrimal gland with the use of the adjuster device, and it can be very successful. How do we determine if we're successful? We're evaluating this animal clinically, and also we're using what's called a Schirmer tear test. In other words, a test for us to be able to uh, figure out how many millimeters of uh, uh, a litmus paper is actually wetted by the tear in a certain period of time. It's an objective way to actually evaluate the tear production by the animal's um, uh, uh, lacrimal glands. If it's low, we got a problem. However, if we start using this technique and all of a sudden, within about two weeks, all of a sudden it comes back up to normal, we won. Okay, so that can be a way for us to go about taking care of this. We also have other frequencies, specific techniques that we use to generate that, where we can treat the eyes specifically, and we can also treat the lacrimal glands specifically. Now, you're not to use a class 4 laser with this because you'll blind the dog. You can use a class 2 laser, like this one, because it will not blind the dog. Although we don't shine it directly into the eye, we're shining it to the side of the head. Remind yourself that this particular type of laser will move all the way through the animal's body and penetration and power is not a consideration with this kind of laser. If I was going to do my own lacrimal glands, I would use it like this, for instance. And we can do this on the dog. We can do both sides for 90 seconds, 180 seconds apiece. The frequencies for this are listed in our master list of frequencies that we have in, in the course that we deliver called frequency-specific low-level laser therapy or veterinary low-level laser therapy, VL3T. If you go to the WOMTech.com website, you'll see that there's, in fact, a lot of information, more information about that particular uh, technology and how it is, why it works, etc., etc. Too much data for me to go through in this miniature lecture, essentially, but we treat chronic, I'm, chronic dry eye, keratitis, conjunctiva vesica, uh, and booger eye, if you will, with this particular technique very effectively. We rarely ever have to send the animal home on uh, artificial tears. I, sometimes the animal has become so allergic to its own lacrimal tissue that we may have to use a little bit of pilo or cyclosporin uh, drops essentially, but at a very, very low rate. It's important to do it that way because then the animal's eye lasts a lot pit longer essentially, and that's not a chronic problem. And also that cyclosporin product, which by the way, it used to cost $16 a bottle. Now it's about $180 a bottle. Go figure. Um, uh, so anyway, I appreciate uh, your time and listening, to looking at this particular miniature lecture about dry eye or keratitis conjunctiva cica or booger eye in the canine, essentially. Thank you, and have a great day.